Greetings and salutations, Dota fans. Welcome in. We're midweek now in the D2L Western Challenge. You're in week number two. And uh, what was supposed to be an alliance doubleheader turns into a single header. Still, yeah, it should be a fun game as Team Liquid has a lot on the line. And Tate the truth, so does Alliance. And uh, leading up to the Western Challenge, I don't know that anyone would have predicted the situation we have in front of us today. Before we get into that, though, let's take a look at the lineups leading off, of course, with Alliance. Alliance, they were in action taking on two uh, two teams yesterday. Got uh, kind of got run over a little bit, if we're honest. As you can see, their record is 0-2 right now. They're sitting down near the cellar, not quite in the bottom of it, but certainly have uh, some ground to make up. They've got S4 in the mid position, of course, with Bulldog, one of the most world-renowned offlaners in the world. Uh, Loda on the uh, carry position, one of the most experienced carry players you're ever going to run into. The support jungle from Ake and, of course, hard support in EGM. Their opponents, well, see how uh, Alliance is ranked 7th? Here's the team behind them. Team Liquid is uh, sitting down at the very, very bottom of things. They're going to have Demon once again standing in in that, uh, that open slot, as you can see, after the departure of Bluff and stuff. And uh, while we're on the topic, congrats to Demon, earning himself a personal sponsorship. You can read more about that pretty much anywhere you like. Anyway, what's left of Team Liquid is led by Way Too Sexy in the support position. They've got Quakeba, of course, in the off lane. Honestly, one of the most hot prospects in the world right now, so far as young Dota talent goes. Bulba has experienced the solo play player as you're ever going to see. And Quakeba and Bulba honestly switch back and forth a lot between who's mid, who's off lane, um, and, and so on and so forth. It just gives them a little bit more flexibility. But then, of course, you've got TC playing the hard carry role. And me, well, I am your host there in AC Chambers. I'll be joined once again by Trout for broadcasting live out of our downtown studio here in San Francisco. The D2L Western Challenge now just about halfway done and uh, things beginning to take shape with both of these teams still looking for their very first win in D2L Western Challenge play. You can bet the intensity will be high and Team Liquid in particular at 0-3. Basically, they win today or they're most likely not going to be seeing the playoffs. So any hope of the postseason is going to begin and end with a win over Alliance right here and right now. The draft is already underway, so we'll be taking you to that in just a moment. Stick around. Again, Team Liquid taking on Alliance. Game one coming up next here on the Western Challenge. We'll be right back. And we're live. Once again, the draft already in progress. We can already see it a little, a little short of halfway done. But Team Liquid leading off with a combination we're seeing more and more often, not just in D2L play, but across the board of tournaments and games and so on. But uh, the Nyx Assassin and Ancient Apparition and Potent Combo, we'll talk about that here in just a moment to help break that down, as well as the draft we see out of Alliance so far. The first pick, Dazzle, followed by the Centaur War Runner, who is really uh, been seeing his star rise in popularity pretty much across the board as well. To help explain, welcome in once again, Trouf Dota. And uh, Trouf, man, yeah, this is becoming more and more common. I mean, the Dazzle pick, whatever we see that uh, here and there just depends on what situationally a team wants to accomplish in the early and mid game for the most part. Centaur, just a very solid pick. And we saw a Bulldog struggle on the hero, if we're honest. Actually, take that back. Uh, we saw Bulldog on the hero, but we did see him struggle the most on the Nyx Assassin yesterday. But uh, Team Liquid with the Nyx Assassin Ancient Apparition pick, we've seen that combination now quite probably half a dozen times, if not more, come out in the first phase. Yeah, we have. And you can hear me, right? I'm just making sure I got yes, the mic. Yes, did not mute it. Awesome. Okay, <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, yeah, as you were mentioning with Admiral Bulldog on the Centaur, and, and you mentioned the Nyx Assassin on he was playing yesterday. In fact, you know, Admiral Bulldog, unfortunately, didn't have the greatest games yesterday, no. to be honest, and hopefully he's able to turn that around. I do know that Alliance had some great games today in the Star Ladder series, uh, I, I, and I believe they actually qualified for Kiev. Don't quote me on that, but I'm, I think they did a couple of victories uh, today. So mm. maybe today they're feeling a bit better and uh, most likely going to see him run that center on the offlane. Of course, they can run it as a one position if they like. doesn't really seem like a load attack hero to me. But as far as the Knicks plus AA combination, yeah, I, I agree with you. We've been seeing it a lot. Any kind of hero that can scout out for a potential long-range ice blast is, is you know, a, quite a good hero to be paired up with that AA. Oh, yeah. Well, not just scout it out, but to be able to capitalize on it. It's really the burst vendetta damage on top of the mana burn that uh, can really punish you. It just gets you into shattered, uh, shatter range so very, very quickly. So, yeah, like you said, he's kind of an early... Think of it like a sniper in, uh, in some of the war games that you see. Um, you know, not necessarily FPS, but still, same basic role. Not only do you provide vision, but you're there to provide critical damage uh, whenever the time's right. That's really what a Nyx Assassin gives you, and any lineup just happens to work well with a global ultimate like Ice Blast. For Alliance, well... They got the chin, and I really like the way this is already winding up. They're, you know, as soon as you see a chin, 
99 times out of 100, you could just assume defensive trial and they'll be pr- protecting Loda. But uh, Ake Shin, world renowned, um, he actually, if you, uh, if you check on Design by Humans, there's it's such a sick shirt uh, that has Ake uh, basically playing the puppet master, and it has uh, a centaur, a wildkin, and a dark troll summoner, or dark troll warlord, or whatever they're called now. Used to be warlord, I think it's summoner now. But he has him kind of using uh, using his hands as puppet strings to control them. So very very <laughs> sick if you're uh, you're an Ake fan. But anyway, you've got good initiation out of the centaur. You're going to have excellent push and excellent team fight with the chin and the dazzle being able to not only buff up armor, but um, of course debuff the armor of the enemy team. But also having the heal. Problem is picking a chin into an ancient apparition. How do you feel about that? It always feels a little chancy to me because you come you run the real risk of one well placed ice blast almost completely negating. One of the biggest advantages that Shen's going to give you in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, well, I mean, just multiple heals against AA is always interesting. Obviously, there's more than just the... I mean, until you get the Ags, it's basically seven seconds in a team fight or whatever that you can't heal. Mm-hmm. And it's not always going to hit everybody, and it's not always going to be super-duper effective. So it's not like it's the end-all, be-all for healers. It's still... It, heals are always going to be strong, and Chen's ultimate always is going to be strong no matter what. It starts to become dicey when the AA gets an ag, so that's when it starts to become really annoying because that 17 seconds is an eternity in a team fight, it seems. So I, I think that Chen's still fine. I was still, it was still so funny to me to see that triple centaur stun um, by hockey <laughs> yes. yesterday. It was just really ridiculous. Unfortunately, they lost that, but yeah, the Batrider picked up here. I know that uh, Alliance is one of the teams that really do favor Batrider in the mid lane specifically, more more so than other teams, and S4 plays it fantastically. Um, the last year here to round it out, it's going to be interesting. I know well, it could be a multitude of different things. It was so fun to see Loda on the PA yesterday. And again, I, I keep saying this. I know that they lost. But man, if they had a better early game, he would have just destroyed come mid to late game with the, with the build that he went, which was really fun, by the way. It was like Maelstrom. Basher. Maelstrom Basher. I don't yeah. know what his items leading up to that hey, word. Maybe just phase boots. You know, he, yeah, was, he, he, he went phase... Uh, yeah, like I, I phase drums BKB was the way you used to do it, but it was that I want to say it was just phase two. Uh, looking, I back think it was it. just like phase, phase maelstrom. Yeah, I, I think it was too actually. BKB into into basher, yeah. Yep. But and it the, was really fun. I would love to see that again. Um, the crit's really good against life stealer. Unfortunately, if you rages, you can't jump to him. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I don't. <laughs> I don't know if we'll see the PA again. But I'm I'm crossing my fingers because it was really fun to watch. I love the Life Stealer and Sand King combination. I, if I'm honest with you, I think I like Liquid's draft a little bit better here. Alliance feels a little bit thin, and it feels like a draft that can be broken with good play. Because you're relying, I mean, having the Bat Rider against the Life Stealer, that's obviously a big benefit. You have some way to account for him for at least an extent of his rage duration um, and so on. But I don't think Liquid's going to worry so much about that because now you have two excellent methods of getting the Life Stealer into a fight. A, a Sand King with a Life Stealer with an AoE. Um, AOE predicated team, especially one with an ancient apparition, is just disgusting. Um, if you're able to time it out correctly and hit an ice blast, even if it only catches two or three, um, say when they're pushing a tower, and that's kind of why I don't like the matchup so much is Alliance with the Chen, unless they're just extremely, extremely precise and how they decide to move across the map and try to avoid fights and take fights and so on. They have a team that really needs to push to feel effective and to get as much mileage out of the heroes they've drafted as they can. But you're going to be pushing into the uh, to the Ice Blast. Then you have Sand King, especially if he gets up an early blink, but even without that, just being able to burrow strike into a fight with a Life Stealer infested, that is so much AoE if you manage to hit an Epicenter and Ice Blast and have the AoE infest damage to say nothing of a Nyx Assassin who's going to pick off stragglers. So I feel like Liquid's uh, lineup is going to be easier to execute. I feel like they're going to be able to punish Alliance more than Alliance can punish them unless they're just 100% on top of their game. And um, if we're honest, yesterday Alliance, we both agreed, looked a little sluggish. They seemed like they were having a hard time finding the groove. They absolutely did. And I agree with you that Team Liquid's lineup is easier, uh, especially with a Lifestealer pickup. It's got to be the easiest core carry in the, in the game. It's just pretty much point and click, and then you go. <laughs> Um, the thing is, is I, I feel like one, it, it really comes down to who gets their core items, but right. I feel like Alliance's core items are more important. And I think if they get them quickly, they're, they're going to have a very easy time in team fights. Because that's one of the things that Alliance really, I think, excels at more so than other teams. And this just goes with teams that have been together longer, is that they, they are really good at communicating throughout team fights. Yep. And I, Dazzle, in my opinion, is also very, very good against Life Stealer. And heroes that don't have like sustained DPS to burst or like to kill someone. Right. So if you you can you can kind of and not, not to mention that the heal is a uh, is physical damage, so it's it's very good against life stealer in that regard. 
but the grave is going to be very effective against a sand king against a life stealer and just in general it's going to be good so i i think if alliance get their core items up quickly they're going to have the centaur ulti also to work with in a blink i i could see this mid game getting very scary for team liquid against uh, alliance's heroes and here we go with the last pick from alliance 24 seconds left mm -hmm. and i'm very curious to see what they pick up yeah, I, I, I think you're 100% right. Um, Alliance, they have a much more difficult team to execute. It can punish Liquid, especially as Lifesteal is trying to get up. Um, I mean, unless he gets, gets an absurd start and has up um, whatever build he wants to go, phase, Sanjanyasha, Armlet, whatever. Unless he brings those out. Pugna, that doesn't surprise me at all, and I think it's an excellent counter pick, in particular to the Sand King, um, just because basically it takes Blink Dagger out of the uh, out of the equation unless he's remarkably well positioned as soon as you start to channel the epicenter your blink's going to go on cd so that in and of itself is a great way to deal with that being able to decrep targets that life stealer is trying to jump on um i think that that really rounds out this lineup in the, and it fits in well with the push that they wanted having the chin the centaur uh bad rider and centaur obviously great heroes and getting behind towers to engage on top of a team even in a defensive position drop the pugna ward and even as they try to deal with you they're going to be taking damage um i was really a little a little bit worried about alliance's draft until the pugna pick i feel so much better about it now so excellent drafting there storm spirit though does add another very nice aggressive dimension to liquid as well I don't, I don't know if I like the Storm Spirit per se here. They have a lot of heal. They have Grave to kind of uh, save the target whoever they're going on. They have the Centaur ulti after the pull. I, I'm not 100% sold on the Storm. I think the idea is that they now have a very good life stealer bomb, but I don't know. Like, again, I think it just comes down to if Alliance can can get their core items. And you mentioned now with the Pugna, it's going to be a bit easier to get their core items because right. power pushing shouldn't be an issue at all. So um, it is a little all-in in the sense that if they don't snowball hard and get a lot of items up, if they start to lose team fights in the mid game, I don't know if they'll be able to come back just because of the, the nature of their lineup. They have no physical damage in the late game whatsoever. Yeah. So it's pretty much an all-in threat in that sense, but it is one that has a little bit of wiggle room. Absolutely. And if you can, my friend, make sure you check your Dota TV to make sure it's on. I'm actually doing the same thing. I had to flip mine uh, to make sure it was in good shape as well. So I'm going to check. Yep, we're good That's everywhere tough. else. So sometimes, okay, okay uh, we should be good. Sometimes whenever you uh, restart the client or whatever, it does have a habit of doing that. I know I've talked to Capitalist and Toby about it extensively. Sometimes it just decides that it's going to default back to off and uh, yeah that's why you have to make sure you check it before every match which obviously we're too stupid to do so gg us moving ahead though we've got the potential for an early battle very quickly level one level one advantage who do you give it to well you have heals from dazzle so if he's able to keep his distance i i think that alliance will be okay although chen's terrible level one so never mind scratch that yep. it should be liquid actually i i totally forgot about the chen He's completely useless in level one engagements, but we'll see. Up oh, here we go. They're gonna jump out. TC's right there. Uses open wounds. That's on EGM. Stomp. This joins a demon. Has a burrow strike. He's gonna catch two. EGM will be your first blood. Let's see how much more they can get. As four's in a ton of trouble being pursued out. There was another blast behind the fight, but two drop, and now Loda in trouble as well. The remnant doesn't proc, however. Demon coming through the woods and finishing him off. Three to nothing. Team Liquid showing the early battle prowess of this squad. And I think a lot of this comes down to what we were talking about during the draft. Even at level one, they're lined up so much easier to execute, so much easier to synergize. They just went ham and have a huge lead now coming into the laning phase. Yeah, they have no business taking a level one skirmish with the, with the Chen. Like, I, maybe they just thought they could pick off an offlane hero that was warding or something like that, but... Also, and I said that maybe they could... I, saw, I said this before I saw the Chen, but obviously Chen's completely useless in level one skirmishes, but mm -hmm. maybe they could have done a little bit better if Dazzle was a bit further away because the heals... Oh, he didn't even get heal. He went shallow grave. Maybe try to save himself at the best time. But yep. yeah, that was just... They, were, they had no business. What a start from Liquid. My God. Yep. Huge AoE. And you know, I'm like you. It's like, what was the plan even there? It's like, you can't challenge them for that. You got there late. And uh, Liquid had the positional advantage coming down that off lane and into the Radiant Jungle. And you're going into a Burrow Strike Impale. I mean, th those two abilities alone would have to make you loathe to want to engage. I mean, they're, they're excellent in terms of early team fight. And even though you have a Centaur, it's like we talked about. There's only so much more you're going to be able to really contribute. But anyway, enough about that. The laning phase is now underway. We can see Bulldogs on our Centaur. He's setting up shop up in the Alf lane. He'll be against the Tri-Lane of Team Liquid.
That's going to be TC, way too. And, of course, the Demon on the Sand King getting a little pull action going on here in mid. It's going to be a matchup of Koikva on the Storm Spirit taking on S4's Bat Rider. And S4 plays a damn good bat. And on bottom, it's going to be Liquid running Bulba as the offlane Nyx Assassin in the face of Loader, who's farming the Pugna EGM on the Dazzle and busy in the jungle, as always, is Ake. Okay, but that uh, took a little, little more time than usual. Not the end of the world, though. Some very nice wards. I mean, they've dewarded everything Liquid uh, tried to do to slow him down. So he should be catching up nicely. Yeah, really good counter ward, and they're gonna have the pull to work with as well. Don't I don't know if they're gonna be pulling it that much because it's like a two on one here, and normally, well, I guess Pugna can easily own the the Nick, so um, I don't think he'll pull that much. But whenever the lane gets pushed up, then he'll start to pull. So mm -hmm. it's pushing up now. He'll probably pull. But um, yeah, also I just thought about that level one engagement too. Uh, that was Admiral Bulldog initiating, I believe, on a Nakes or a Life Stealer, and yeah. that's like not the hero you want to do it on. That is probably one of the last, if any. To do it on because he usually there will if a smart life stealer player will pre or not pre skill and they'll wait and see you you know what they need to skill so not the best target but Admiral Bulldog he's running around trying to scout out something maybe he's trying to scout out like a this is what a lot of players do they'll try to scout out a potential smoke right. try to break a smoke that's coming out from mid I don't know if they were actually using it and I don't even know if they have smokes on them yeah Demon has one so he he knows that he can't really get anything up here so he's trying to do something so that that's yep. kind of a smart play. Yep, Demon. Um, I would imagine Demon will end up smoking to mid soon. It should be easy for S4 to avoid, though, because, I mean, we're already at three minutes, and, you know, three to five um, is pretty much where you can just uh, safely assume that if you don't have eyes on the enemy supports, they're going to be trying to get on top of you. So we got to get on top of you, Bulba, being a nuisance and down in the jungle, trying to soak some XP here. But, yeah, I mean, four minutes in, first night, uh, reduced vision. You'll probably see S4 tuck up under his tower and stay very, very safe uh, for the most part. But up at top, this I feel like this is actually going to be a very difficult try lane for uh, for Alliance to try to get very aggressive against in terms of collapsing. Um, so I think they're going to be prioritizing mid as well. Quakefa though is almost level five, so he'll have level six soon. Yep, I'm going to pull up the last hits and denies, and uh, looks relatively even here. So oh, obviously, it's down at bottom, on. Bulba caught out. Down goes the Nether Ward. Bulba uses the carapace. Let's see if that'll be enough. He actually turns, shoots the impale that kept the centaur off of him, and that's going to end up keeping him alive. If he uh, is unable to get the centaur there, if, if he does a little more poorly on his jukes, he's dead there instead, manages to make it back. So failed gank attempt there and a little time wasted for Ake. And they may decide to try and push down this tier one though. I think they need to or else Bulba's gonna get way too much experience here. He's already almost level five. Fantastic play by Bulba there, by the mm -hmm. way. Amazing jukes and that should, that should have actually been an easy kill, but Bulba really, really played it well. He's got the boots and the four nans as well. So level five for Bulba, if they don't like Keep him out right now and get this tower fast. He's going to get level six here, and that's going to be huge for, for Liquid. Down at bottom, we can see that aggression you're talking about. I was actually watching uh, Bulldog just bang away on poor Way2. And Demon starting to find a decent amount of levels now, catching up some by using Sandstorm to jungle. So he will be looking to get active soon, I'm sure. And yeah, we can already see Demon is level four, two points into Sandstorm, two into Burrow Strike. Tier one ends up dropping. And now, like you said, Bulba. Should be slowed down if they can get it sucked back. He's actually going to hit level 6 here, so check that. Yeah. Um, he'll He's be able to get very active. Up in mid, we're actually going to see the bat picked off by Demon. We were watching bottom, and in mid, they managed to find a kill onto, uh, onto S4. So, very nice rotation from them. Yeah, I mean, Storm is one of the best heroes to gank for once you time it once he's level 6. And Demon didn't even have to waste a smoke right there, so he still has a smoke available. He's trying to do some sandstorming, uh, the rooting in the jungle there <laughs> to get that level 5 to make it easier to get some ganks off of the Burrow Strike. So, yeah, very good gank coming out from Demon. Um, Centaur, he's up here. He is just not even close to the level of Bulba. He's literally mm -hmm. half right now. And that's one of the things about pushing here early on is... I, I don't even know what to say. Bulba's just such a high level, and this is going to be really bad for Alliance if they're not able to capitalize on this extra gold in this early tower push that they have. Yep. Yeah, I, I think this is what it's coming down to, the draft that we had talked about. Um, Liquid, with all the advantage in the world, I mean, at just five and a half minutes in, that's actually kind of shocking. I, you, they've actually been losing ground, and it seemed to me like Liquid was um, at least holding onto that lead, but it's actually been cut down quite a bit. It was almost 1,000 gold before the creeps even spawned, and now it's been cut down to 350, so Alliance is immensely more efficient than them right now, despite TC being on top of the overall uh, CS board, so... Um, Elias is actually holding this together pretty well, but of course that does have a lot to do with that tier one tower dropping in uh, in bottom too. Yeah, and Ake's got some good CS on Chen as well. He's up to 20 CS, and 
you have to compare that to another support hero on the liquid, like uh, AA has one, for example, and uh, Dazzle has 11. So there, I think the supports are just getting a lot more early on here for Alliance. And as you mentioned, obviously, the tower is going to help out with that as well. Dive at bottom, Quakefa and Demon. There's the ball lightning. Loader going to be Vortex back. Demon's there with the Burrow Strike. Easiest kill of their lives as Liquid once again takes it to Alliance. And this has been getting to look really, really worrisome to me. Um, you know, S4 is in great shape. That's, that's the bright, shining spot they have. We actually see a Midas pick up out of TC, so that tells you how confident he is and where his team is not even going with an early fight item. You think that's the right choice? I feel like if he went something like an early <laughs> armlet, uh, they would actually be able to just put the screws to Alliance in a big way. I, I'm never not going to be a fan of Midas. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's a good item on Nakes uh, all the yeah. time. I have to be careful to say Nakes when there's a Nakes in the game, by the way. I just yeah. need to stop doing that. But the Life Stealer, yeah, I think it's great on him. And I just think he benefits. He's one of the a few heroes that uh, buys Midas all the time that actually really benefits from the, life, or the uh, extra attack speed. Not to mention, I mean, this is a hero that's one of the best in the city. Oh, lots of lots of pushing in the mid, as I'll hold that thought. I yep. have an engagement here. Tier 1's down, Demon. Yes, thinking about it, here we go. Quakefoot came in, but ate a lot of damage there from the Nether Ward. Demon can't do anything. He's going to be brought down too quickly by Nether Ward. And yeah, he's knocked back. And Demon has to spend his Burrow Strike to look for safety. Good impale might buy him just enough time to escape. But there's going to be a Vortex on the S4. And there's the Grave to make sure he stays alive. They have to disengage. And TC, he's there, but he's not going to be able to contribute a whole hell of a lot. And this, I feel like, is absolutely essential for Alliance. They have to keep this pressure up and force Liquid to group in ways they might not want to. Because right now, I think Liquid would be happy as hell to play the farm game. AA still looking for his level 6. That'll change things up as well. So Alliance able to bring down two Tier 1s. And that's all. That's very, very good for them for obvious reasons. But I, I think it's going to get exponentially more difficult once Way 2 does find level 6. I agree with you, and I've said that before when we saw, like, I can push base strats, right. and we saw the AA Ice Blast just makes it so much easier to defend against that. So, yeah, I agree with you. I think Way 2 needs to get level 6. I also think Way 2 needs, actually, a pretty good amounts of farm this game so mm -hmm. that we can see the full effectiveness of an AA in this game. Because I, one of the things that Lota, or Alliance is doing quite well is obviously pushing all these towers and then getting back to the lanes to make yeah. sure that they're still farming. It's not just a push tower, okay, now group up, push next tower which could be fine, you'll get a huge gold lead, but you'll massively lose out in experience. So this is smart of them. They're getting a tower, and then they're regroup, or then they're kind of redistributing their heroes around the map to get max, map, max amount of resources. So yep. it's, it's really smart play by them. Lotus picked up a Staff of Wizardry, was just going to say, I think a, the item choice for this lineup might uh, be a Necro book. If he wants to go that direction, he could, of course, go something like a... I can't imagine four staff would be a decent choice for him, but could end up going something like a scepter if he really wanted to uh, try to be a... Try for to uh, For load up. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I think Necrobook's going to end up being where he goes with it as he already, already has up the staff of wizardry. But at any rate, it remains five to nothing. Alliance has brought down two towers, though, and they actually have the gold lead. So even though Liquid jumped out to such a huge advantage early on, and they still maintain the experience lead, the gold is slowing slowly going in favor of Alliance just to, to nothing but efficiency and towers. Now they've got a smoke on EGM and Aki. We'll see what they want to do next. I think Liquid could have easily pushed this top tower about three minutes ago when Alliance was pushing mid. The, the brute force push that Alliance had in that mid lane, there shouldn't have been any question for Liquid as to whether or not they should try to defend it or or just go back and split push and farm. Uh-oh. Oh. Bulba, looks like he's in trouble. Yep. Lassoed back. He got the carapace oh off, but <laughs> that's a little bit of burst, maybe. Just a little bit. Smidgen, even the Seder Tormentor, getting in uh, in line with the Shockwave there to help out. Yeah, and this needs to be split pushing, bam, on, on both sides of the lanes. And they needed to be doing this earlier, honestly. I mean, their whole lineup right now, and it's not so Ooh. much the Midas on TC. Big AA ult. That was shot from the corner, by the way. And let's see if that's going to deter them anyway. Continue. Yeah, but th they should know that they can't def they can't defend any pushes right now. And they, they couldn't even, even if TC did go for more of a fighting build, I, don't, I still don't think that would warrant pushes or warrant defense. It needs to be core items on, I think, uh, SK. So actually, Demon almost has his blink. This could be the time when they sh can decide to maybe 
Uh oh, he actually doesn't have enough. He bought his blink, but now he doesn't have enough for a TP scroll. <laughs> oh no! This tier three is taking way too much damage. Okay, they just gave him one from the AA. The ice blast is coming out as well. Well, the thing is, the Nether Ward's already down. The Nether Ward basically negates the value of the blink because it'll be put on cooldown as soon as he decides to channel his epicenter. Here comes the A ultimate though, and they come out with TC and Quickfa. What a grave on the loader to keep him up and fighting. And now TC in trouble, stomped down by Admiral Bulldog. And Liquid has traded one for two. Up now, that's how you use the epicenter. Still catching up, following the fight, better than not using it at all. Demon may end up dead here nonetheless, and will. The test of faith, enough to get the kill to clean up the last of it. So they did manage to get a lot of damage done, but the tower does stand. Liquid mustering a defense just a little, little late in it, I think, and they gave away a whole hell of a lot to keep that tier three standing. Yeah, good play by Demon right there. I think that one-for-one one trade was fine. He yeah. almost got away, but S4 with a good presence of mind able to go back on and get him. But yeah, yeah the problem is um, it's not so much like... I, I feel it's not so much uh, item pickups from, from TC. Because I know a lot of people are thinking, why do you go Midas against this heavy pushing strap? But I don't. I still don't think it's that bad. I think the Midas pays for itself quite, quite fast. I think the problem is just that you don't have much split push. Yep. The, the only split push you have is the blink from SK, which you can't rely on at 12 minutes. Like, that's a fantastic timing by Demon. Right. It's just, like, you, you should want to expect against a heavy push, like, 20 to 25 minute blink coming out from Demon. So the fact that he has that is amazing. Yeah. But if he didn't have that, which he shouldn't, it, the only kind of counter push you have is a stun from Nyx and the AA Blast, which really doesn't do much at level 1 without yeah. that. So... It's just kind of a... Uh, oh, here, we here we go. EGM graves himself as a lasso on the Bulba. However, Liquid looks to follow this up. And there's the knockback. Actually, the double edge brings one down. Demon's in trouble. He's in the next to drop. Next is way too. And the Stampede showing its power once again and why the, the hero, Centaur, is so popular and is being given so much attention now. It can just turn a fight. It can flip a fight. It can let you engage, disengage, whatever you want. That time, it gave Alliance... Another big exchange, and they're not done. Koikva, decrept and blown to pieces. Wow. Could not even ball lightning away. And I, st I, I feel like Liquid has all the tools they need to deal with this. I just feel like Alliance is outplaying them. I really did like Liquid's draft better, but Alliance is making this five-man lineup just absolutely work for them. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, actually, I actually really like Alliance's lineup a bit more. Just... Yeah. The, like I said at the beginning, too, the Storm Spirit pick just didn't sell it for me yeah. against the heroes that Alliance had. Like, I, like he goes in, what does he do? He can't kill anybody. He can't just, like, like... The best he can do is sit up, like, three remnants before a push happens and hopefully run into them to, like, maybe stall it just a bit. Um, also, in retrospect, the Life Stealer pick is just not going to be very effective at all. He's, he's okay because he can kind of maybe rage and kite him a little bit with open wounds, but that's it's not that great. Um, even that Nyx Assassin doesn't offer that much to push this, but I, I really think the biggest thing was the Storm Spear pick. Yeah. I, I don't think that Lifesteal Bombs are going to be effective at all, and that, it, maybe that was their idea, yep. but it needed it needed to be something with more spam and more um, defense for your towers. Yep. Like, he's just not going to do anything in fights, I feel, because this is a lineup for Alliance that they're not going to separate. Right. They're, they're not, they're, they're not going to give you room to pick them off, so that makes the, that completely negates the effect or the power of Storm Spirit. I, I 100 percent agree with you on that point for sure. Um, if any if anything, I think the Storm Spirit pick, like you said, certainly could have been better served um, with another hero out of mid. I also think it it offered a solution to something that had already been solved. Like how does Life Stealer get into fights? How do you drop that bomb? And a Sand King works that does just fine in that role. You didn't really need yeah. the Storm Spirit the Storm Spirit pick to capitalize on that. Um, and instead, like you said. Only, only basically giving more of what you already had, and there's only so much you're going to get out of what you already have. So, um, but more free damage being done to the uh, to the racks, and we can see that Necronomicon archer doing its job. There goes the sentry down from Demon to try and make sure they don't have any vision on the high ground. Nether Ward is down; it's going to be brought down, and they could just siege this out with creeps at this point. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Look at that, and they're hitting the range racks too because they know it won't be gen. So. Yep. Under Smart play from them. Liquid Way 2. He's sitting at the opposite side because he knows he needs the act maximum AoE from his ult. But again, it's a level 1 ult. It's not really going to do that much. As soon as it fades, they're all going to be uh, healed to full. Basically. Here we go. Koifo wants to jump in and start a fight. A ultimate's on the way. They're going to find them all. This is what they wanted to put together. EGM graves himself. Doesn't look like Loda's going to be lucky enough. There's going to be a lasso on the Koifo behind the fight. And the hand of God, as soon as the AA ultimate expires, enough to turn this back around. It's a two-for-one exchange, but now Alliance is on the aggressive. 
S4 leading the charge, stacking it up, and now big stomp. Impale disjoints things. Not enough to save his teammate, though. Quickfoot's going to vortex back S4. Bulba looking to come in from behind and do damage. Chen, Chen set back. Chen set back. Oh, oh so close. Bulba chasing AK back out of the fight, and Bulldog's going to go back in. Stomp down way too. Double edge and the help from the Chen creeps. So even as AK's being pursued, helping to secure another kill, however, Bulldog trades himself for it, and AK... Playing very aggressive still yet, recognizing neither of those heroes had a lot of mana. He could just stand and trade right clicks with them for a little while. EGM's going to come back up, give him a dose of mana of his own. But once again, Liquid's able to hold their racks up, but they certainly are looking a little haggard. That ranged racks down to 500 HP, this, the uh, melee racks will regen. But still, uh, the, the, I, would you call that a successful siege, or do you think Liquid did about as good a job as you could have asked? No, I think Liquid succeeded. They, they yep. defended the racks. They're buying some more time for the course to get up some more items, like in Orchids. So, really good, um, just pushing it to them, like committing to that kill onto Loda, and just not giving up until they got it. So, yeah, one of the one of the small drawbacks about this lineup right now for Alliance is that Loda has such little HP. Mm -hmm. They have lots of heal, but they can burst them down before the heal, and if they have the ice blast on them while they burst them down, he's he's going to die so fast so right he's, he's going necro book as well so if they continue to do that they can still stall these pushes and just buy more time for their team so loda really yeah he's going to finish his necro three but after that he really needs hp like desperately yep. maybe even maybe even a bkb right after well we saw the strength of the life stealer bomb with quakeful honestly that had just as much to do with the a ultimate though way too managed to catch three or four with it and uh, that made a huge a uh, huge difference. I think at this stage, um, Alliance is going to have to prioritize getting the jump on Liquid instead of vice versa. You know, whenever, yeah. you, whenever you let Liquid set up, it's going to guarantee a bigger range on the A ultimate um, just because he'll drop back and fire it from as far as he can to up the radius. And, of course, it's, there's always advantage in having the initiation. But with this lineup in particular, I don't think they can afford to sit back and let that happen to them because Liquid right now um, is doing all right. They're holding on. They're going to take a Tier 1. They'll probably be able to fall back and defend their own Tier 2 if they really want to. And we'll see. They've got two no, about No, they can't. It. They can't. They're, this is what they should have been doing before, is yeah. split pushing. And you need to anticipate the push, really, when this happened about, like, 10 minutes ago. Right. So th this is this is a better uh, situation for them, split pushing. They might even get three towers to two if they're, if they're lucky and get this tower in mid. And they might, because Alliance is the, the only... A couple drawbacks that they have, too. I mentioned the one about Loda, but... They're not very mobile as a team. They're kind of like, once they start pushing, they don't really want to separate. They kind of want to just group up because that's where their strength lies. And also, I got to give a big shout out to Ake, who was just For performing sure. out of his mind. Up, hang on. That. Jump onto S4, trying to get out and will be able to make it away because of the Stampede. Let's see if they want to reinitiate or fall back. That Nether Ward is doing work. Here comes the A Ultimate. That's going to catch a handful. Behind that, though, we've got a lasso on the TC. Big double edge. Does great damage. Demon has Epicenter, but can't use it yet. And the Grave keeps S4 up and breathing. In the meantime, the Creeps continuing to siege this out. Alliance, let's see. Do they want to fight again? They might. Lasso's going to be 60 seconds on cooldown. Same with Stampede. They do still have a Nether Ward ready to put back up in just a moment. Yep, it's actually off cooldown already. And he has maxed it, but looks like they're not going to take their stand now. Instead, going to fall back. That, without a doubt, is a big win for Liquid. They managed to take all those towers. It cost them only one, and they got back and defended. Yes, their Tier 3 is getting banged, but the more and more of these fights that go by, TC's continuing to put together items. He already has up phase and drums now to go with his Midas, and he'll be looking for his next big item, be it an armlet or an S&Y. Well, that, that's kind of it's bad, though, because he had to buy back and didn't get to use anything out of it. They, yep. His buyback deterred them from pushing any further, but that's still that, that's not a win at all, in my in my opinion. And they got they got the Necro 3 up onto uh, Loda as up. well. Jump on S4. And Bulba's there to help him out. That'll be a nice little kill for them. Behind that, Alliance might re-engage. Demon's got eyes on them. And his Blink Dagger on cooldown constantly because of Poison Touch. And that's just a uh, smart play from the... Uh, from EGM's Dazzle, just knowing that if you you can take away a lot of his mobility. Oh, look at Demon. He's up on the perch. He's got eyes on Bulldog. And he's pinging. Here we go. Epicenter going to jump down. And there's the impale as well. A ultimate just to secure it. And he goes into the sandstorm. They may end up. Nope, never mind. Bulba comes down to help. And there's going to be the grave to buy him time. Now they reinitiate him. Bulba ends up dying. And Demon, in the meantime, makes it away, and Bulldog somehow survives all of that through some excellent teamwork <laughs> and good communication. Oh, that was like a really cheeky play that almost worked almost. out. Almost. But he got healed. He got healed right before the Ice Blast came out. Yep. And then as a result, it bought a little bit more time for the Grave to come out and just 
and to save him. They didn't quite. Oh, it was a really clutch heal right before that ice blast. Otherwise, he was dead 100%. Mm -hmm. So damn close. But yeah, while there's a little bit of time, I got to give so much props, man, to Ake. It's so fun to watch these double Satyr Tormentors just boom, boom, and just yep. do so much damage with their nukes. And the cool thing about these is they have 600 mana. Yep. So they can cast it six times. Yep. Um, of course, and then they can you know get their mana reloaded. To, oh, actually, I did, I missed that, but Batrider gets a kill onto Koiko down to the bottom lane. Yeah, I actually missed it too. I was watching the push in mid. And yeah, nice what kill. What was he doing down there? No clue. <laughs> Literally no clue. I mean, I guess he was maybe presuming that if they're pushing together that all the heroes are going to be together but mm -hmm. th that was just good heads up play from the two blinkers of alliance which are um s4 and admiral bulldog so yeah good good pick off there and we're gonna see a scepter done on way too now so that'll help out immensely now they're gonna have demon picking off loda well not, well not picking off spotting out probably the optimum term loda doesn't care demon says hello as he is a gentleman and does what he does loda of course returning his his greetings and salutations but uh, necro 3 is actually going to be on the way now for Ake as well. That Actually, that'll be Necro 2 so far, but should have another Necro 3 up before long. And they're just going to get to the point where they can just overrun Liquid with nothing but creeps, just fall back, stick together, and uh, wait to just siege them out with these powerful Necro book creeps. Yep. Push coming out here. The Necro... This should be a, a range rack, dead, if anything. Could be more. And it looks like a... Oh, no, that, that was way too running away. I thought that was someone else. He wants, again, the max range. He now has Ags in level uh, level 2 Ice Blast, so even though they're losing these racks, so this is kind of inevitable. Um, but th this this Ags upgrade for, for way too and the level 11 could actually make a difference here. And it looks like they're trying to find a way in. Koif is locked and loaded as a passenger, and... Alliance might just fall back. They're at least going to wait for the next creep wave. Nope, they're not going to give up yet. S4. Has a little time left on Firefly. Will not be using it now, so he'll they'll mo almost certainly wait on that to be back off CD before they really try to make a concerted rush at the racks. But so far as Necro Book goes, uh, yeah, Ake okay. is pretty much got his. I mean, he's got his up to level two, more or less. He just hasn't yet to complete it, so that would certainly help out a little bit. But I think we're going to get into the Hunger Games now as Alliance most likely going to try to starve out Liquid. Yeah, and... Here comes Liquid Way 2. He's, or sorry, Koikva. He's got a passenger, and uh, they probably want to time this with the Ice Blast because it is an Ag's upgrade. This could be the opening that Liquid wants. They need the ward down from Loda, and it is down. Uh, Bulba's right, got eyes. Oh, the impale. He doubled, double clutched it. They're going to try to re engage off it. AA Ultimate will be there, but the pipe was already up. There's a big epicenter coming out from Demon. However,. They're able to turn around with the big heals, the mech plus the hand of God. And just look at the damage Koikva is able to wreak even as he takes a lot more damage from the Nether Ward. Buyback came out on both sides there. We saw Koikva spend his EGMs back up as well, and he's hustling back right now. But uh, the Sand King already shot his wad. Not only is he down, he doesn't have buyback. Oh, no, he does, actually, if he has to, but he'll be coming back up without, without Epicenter. They do bring down the racks in the meantime. And I would say that's going to be considered a win for Alliance. Um, it cost him a buyback, but it was just on the Dazzle. Um, he's playing the five roll, so not the biggest deal in the world. And <laughs> Chin send back always allows you to be cheeky as you retreat. Yep. And um, I, that was just, like, really good positioning by Alliance. I don't know if they did this on purpose, but they, like, all backed in the corner here. I don't think the AA ulti really hit very many people, if any. I, it, I didn't quite see it. No, it hit back, and I, I know that for sure. I, that might have been the only one. So it was like, yeah, I don't know if they intended to do that. It was a very interesting spot for them to stand. Normally, you don't want to be kind of crunched up like that right. when you have AoE spells from Liquid, but maybe they saw the AA Blast coming and they were just had the good heads up and presence of mind to run away. But yeah, the AA ulti, if, I feel like if it connected with more, it could have been a lot more effective because you have so many heals coming out, and you saw it. It's just like, heal, 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 heal. There's like yep. three different ways to heal. And... Um, yeah, the only one that was really close to shattering was, I think, the only person that was hit, and that was S4, but he didn't even die. Yep. And the patience that was used there. And by the way, the pipe for Bulldog, really, I think, the difference maker there. Without that pipe, the magic damage with them all crushed up like that, as you had mentioned, the epicenter and everything else, I think they would have dropped, like, just dropped it a huge group. Instead, they had the pipe, the patience from Ake to hold on to the mech yep. and the hand of God, and as soon as, uh, as, soon as the ice blast went off just everyone just kind of kited it out ate the damage and knew that at the end of the at the end of the tunnel there was some light and his his name is Ake 
But, uh, yeah, it feels like a very long game. But it's only, we're only 26 minutes in just because we've had so much action and we're already seeing the base push. And it's 31 kills in a 25-minute game. In terms of net worth, with that last fight, Alliance Leapfrogs, the two that were at the top for the longest time in uh, Koikva as well as TC. And there's a book three now done on Shin just yeah. in one big shot. That is going to hurt. It is. And it's smart of them to go on the outside lanes, too, because it's – it, it, there's more distance from the top lane to the bottom lane, so it's going to be harder for Liquid to... I mean, they already have terrible uh, counter-pushing abilities, and so when they're making them run all the way from top lane to bottom lane to defend on both sides, it's going to be very, very difficult. They're going to have to almost initiate before they get into the base, but they're not ready. Like, they're, some people are pinging it out, but the rest of the team's not quite ready. Yeah. If they get a good AA, well, here we go. Oh, they're going to jump in. They're going to catch out easy. Behind that demon goes for the big combination. Hand of God's up, and... All of them, the damage turned completely around. The pipe went off. All of the heals. Look at the creep wave between Necro, between Shin Creeps. That's it. The epicenter does end up going off there and forcing two buybacks out. This is going to be all in right now. There's going to be a stomp on the TC. Double edge is there. Demon comes in from behind nice, as well. Okay. And Ake okay, chain stunning him with the Centaur. Down goes another melee racks. Down goes another ranged racks. And honestly, this is GG territory. They don't have to yeah. back out of the base, I don't think, and uh, Team Liquid could call it at any moment. What? There's, there's yeah. no way. Clickway has no buyback. Ake okay, is playing out of his freaking mind this game, by the way. 7 0 and 8 on Chen. Just, I've been watching him. His micro has been absolutely tip top shape, perfect. Yep. His heals are coming out. He's anticipating the AA blast, and his heals are coming out before it when he knows his teammates are going to get hit by it. Otherwise, he knows that it's going to be pretty negligible against the, the Ags upgrade. Here, another Ice Blast is only going to hit two. And, yeah, so, really, Ake okay, is just playing so well for Alliance. I mean, they're, they're yeah. all gelling, but really, Ake okay is standing out to me. Yeah, uh, this is Ake okay Chin, man. This is why you ban it. This is why you don't allow him to get his hands on it. Just uh, so disgusting. And, you know, I almost wore my my uh, my Ake okay Puppet Master shirt today, but I got harassed yesterday because... I, I honestly didn't think when I put on my Alliance shirt to come to work yesterday there was Alliance doubleheader. And I almost wore the Ake one today, but I didn't because I thought people would get all uppity about it. But you should check it out on Design by Humans. It's sick, and definitely there's uh, – this game is ample proof as to why he deserves to have a freaking shirt made about himself. S4 is going to get a lasso off that drags TC back into the fray. Weave goes off, but, yeah, that lasted no time whatsoever. That'll be no buyback for TC for four minutes. Quakefa is up. He has no buyback either. Pretty much buybacks are spent across the board for them. Uh, Bulba still has one, I suppose. Pipe's already up. A ultimate will connect. BKB's already there, though. Quakefa's going to jump back out. Bulba hits an impale, but the follow-up from Bulldog is there. Stampede, fl a flame break, and GG. As Alliance coming into the game, they had the more difficult to execute lineup. We actually saw them start and stutter a few times. They started out in about as big a hole as you're gonna. Falling behind three to nothing. But nonetheless, their execution, communication, movement, decision making on par and liquid, as well as they held on for as long as they could, it just never could quite bring it together. Yeah, I mean, it was a very well executed lineup from Alliance. And you know that because they started out zero to three yeah. at the beginning of the game. So that's just a testament to how strong their lineup was as a whole. And I mean, really, Ake on the chin fantastically played by him um, you were mentioning that it was an early game with even it was it was five to zero at one point actually yep in favor of liquid but even then they had a tower push and then Ake was still had like 25 cs something around that i don't know five six minute mark where the supports for liquid were not even that farmed demon actually had um, a lot of farming mean, despite his one six and eight played quite well yeah um, but other than that the aa at, the, at, that, at that same time had like no cs under his belt the Chen had so much farm and still was able to maneuver around despite the fact that Chen's not a very mobile hero. So yep. Ake just really, really sealed it today, in my opinion. And um, S4, obviously, with some fantastic initiation on the bat um, onto multiple different heroes, namely the Life Stealer. TC got caught out a couple times towards the end. I know it's in desperation mode and kind of risk mode towards the end when you're down four racks, but yeah, well played by Alliance. And nice draft. 8 and 9 on Aki's Chen. I think that tells you about everything you need to know about how 420 well... GPM! <laughs> there you go. That's right. Live it up, guys. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll, yeah, I think Aki's earned it.
after a performance like that. So 28 minutes, 58 seconds, a sub 30 minute game as Alliance takes game one over Team Liquid. Looking ahead to what could be our final game of the day as Alliance looks to finally get uh, one in the win column, but Liquid, well, they've got the same thing in mind. <clears throat> They're also sitting down in the cellar. I'm your host, Aaron AC Chambers. Make sure you check out myself and, of course, my co-caster, Trout, on Twitter whenever you get a chance. I'm at AC at A-Y-E-S-E-E. Trout is at Trout Dota at T-R-A-L-F. D-O-T-A. You can also find updates from the D2L, all that we have going on, the Investment Challenge, our eventual full fifth season coming up, as well as other initiatives that we have planned, and we hope you guys will join us for in the future. Uh, find updates on that on both Facebook and Twitter. It's at D2LGG on Twitter, and pretty much the same thing on Facebook, D2LGG. Once again, Team Liquid drops game one. Alliance looks to close it out. Team Liquid, well, they want to show us three games here today. We'll find out which team's up to the task coming up next. Stick with us. We'll be right back here on the Western Challenge.